there is something that I use current in it's present always in, in, in my in my practice, which uh, um, is this phrase that, that you see here, which is notice what you notice. And I think we talked about this before with, with Julia. Uh, it is something that was mentioned to me, you know, a long time ago. <clears throat> and I, I found it really interesting because, uh, you know, it's, it's the fact of being able to know, well, as, as, the word, as the phrase says, being able to see and notice what you, what you see when you're walking, when you're in the streets, when you're traveling or whatever. So it's just like a, a way of paying attention to what you really pay attention in, you know, in the streets or in the or urban landscape or, or so on. So <clears throat> I'll say why I start with, with that phrase, because most of my work, it's uh, based on the, you know, recopilation of objects and images and, you know, different materials that I find uh, constantly when, you know, when I'm walking in the streets, when I'm traveling and, and when I'm visiting, dif visiting different cities and different um, landscapes and rural areas. So we start first of all with, with this project, which is the one that was selected for the primal distance exhibition, which is uh, Terra Ferro Pedra, which means um, uh, er, uh, well, oil, iron, and, and stone. And this is, um, these are a series of um, small assemblages, small sculptures that are made of, um, that I made uh, when traveling to the mountains of the, of the Catalan rural area here in, in, in Catalonia, of course. So these uh, to me are sort of like a conversation between materials, you know, and juxtaposition of, of different materials that are taken away from their um, original landscape and, and put together in a way that create a different conversation of what they usually are made of uh, for in, uh, originally. So I'm thinking, you know, the, the iron, the steel, uh, you know, this element that we use to create houses and create buildings and all this other stuff, um, you know, very constructional material. And then you have the, the, the stone, which you found you know, in the pre perennial area here in Catalonia, you can find it everywhere. And you see houses built around these, these sort of uh, stones. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, it's very, very down to earth material. And then uh, elements like, like the roof tile that you see here, mm -hmm. or even the ceramics that you see in these other works that are part of more like a cultural history tradition, you know, in this area. So it's uh, also a very, Earth-like material that are tra is transformed in the use of, of um, ceramics or you know containers. Uh, so I combine these materials in a way of making them have this different kind of conversation that where you're supposed to have at the, at the uh, you know at the at the beginning. Um, so so here uh, I'm choosing some images that I use as a references for these kind of works especially the one on the right with the roof tiles and the stones, you see that um, the, the people use in the older, older houses, they use the roof tiles, um, they place the roof tiles and then they put on top the, the stones to keep them in place. So in case, you know, there is a strong wind or rain or whatever, they stay there. But, you know, to me particularly, like these kind of sites are, it's, it's beautiful, you know, just the combination of the of the use because the you know the the reason why they put these stones on top of the roof tiles is just for for um for for the purposes of making them stay there and don't fall but then it's you know it's it's an installation itself okay. so that's where i draw the the this sort of uh, of of you know thinking and also you see the stones which are on the lower side of the picture and you see it here which is the, you know, the, the, one of the walls of the house. So it's, again, it's like this juxtaposition, uh, sort of like a collage-like, in, you know, in 3D, uh, creating uh, these sort of, uh, of uh, assemblages that are being there for centuries, you know? 
Yeah. So that's um, that's kind of like uh, where I'm taking these these uh, these ideas when I start traveling around the, the mountains around here, uh, parts of Catalonia. And this is a piece that actually talks more about. Well, it's also related to 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 history and to human history, and this um, this comes from the idea of the container being one of the first like real inventions in, in human history mm -hmm. and the container of the, um, the idea of that the first movement that we as humans did um, was to like put our hands together to, to like drink water from the river or whatever. So we create this movement with our hands. So we, the, the first thing that we create was, was a container even before the wheel, you know? And then we start thinking of ways of using the material like the clay and stuff like that to actually create a, an, an object to be able to carry water or, or, or other elements. So um, I was fascinated by the idea of how the first invasion that we made as humankind was actually something that we, was the way we use our hands. And so how we carry that with, uh, with us for, for forever. We always been carrying that object that we create. Um, so I decided to use these little containers or create some containers in, in, in a sense of like, sort of like representing the, the history of all the history that we've been carrying ever since. Mm -hmm. uh, all the different cultures around the world create their own kind of containers and they decorate them and they paint them and they, you know, put their marks on it, uh, representing their, their culture, their tradition, their history, and so on. Um, so, you know, it's something that has been present ever since and it's most likely to gonna be present uh, after we die and after we're not here. It's sort of like a, that those lines connecting history, you know, connecting past and present and future mm -hmm. and, and taking you from one history to another and one present to another and one past to the future and, and so on. Um, so as you see conceptually, it's a totally different story from where formally I took the idea of making, you know, a steel structure holding, um, ceramics and, and, and containers, which came from, from the previous idea of like these images, you know, mm -hmm. which at the beginning has nothing to do with it, but to me is totally present, you know, this, for example, <clears throat> it, it's uh, this steel fence that is put and then somehow the stone uh, beneath it is like taking over. Uh, but, all, but at the same time he's holding it and then right in the middle of that you have the, the nature growing up you know so it's uh, it's somehow creating uh, the same conversation that you know we're talking here of history and nature and, and humankind all together in one piece so this will be like the real thing nobody has done it this intentionally but that idea, it's drawn from here and, and then becomes, you know, this, this kind of pieces. Mm -hmm. How do you imagine the relation between the spectator and uh, this piece? How do I mention? Imagine the relation between oh. the spectator, <laughs> the visitor. Do you want them to go closer and see the little details? So. Yeah, I mean, it's the idea it's actually that's a, that's a good question because the piece is meant to be walked through you know so like you can walk through the piece and walk around and it's supposed to be an open space um, but at the same time it's very delicate because you know it has all these little containers which are not attached to anything like you can take them or like push them and they will fall and, and, they're, and they're delicate because of the, its own material, but the material they're made of is really delicate. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I think it's, it's interesting 
um, to invite people to approach the piece but at the same time be super careful in how they walk around and how they how they approach and you know how they interact with the piece which you know it's it makes sense when thinking about history in in a way because you know i i found you know this relation of how you handle your own history or how you handle the history that's being brought to you by your ancestors and how how careful you have to be with it you know because that can be broken and it's it's very fragile it can be changed and and depending on each person you know it's each person has their own opinion or decision what to do what with that history that is you know that that, that all of us are are carrying so it's a fragile approach that i see mm -hmm. um which is literally the same thing with this you know it, I'm, i'm expecting the the spectator to be aware of their of their surroundings you know because it's okay. it's a piece that again it's supposed to be walk through the piece and you know but uh but you have to be very careful mm -hmm. so i i like that idea of, of you know of like the two okay. conversations happening mm -hmm. yeah and then uh, <clears throat> this um this is the project that is called playground and these are like small um also small structures made of um steel and, and bricks mm -hmm. Um, see how like this one and this uh, the the image on the right to me again these are like super connected you know yeah um, like the, the the steel structure holding the the stone is the same here so you know it's that idea of art replicates life or light imitates art to me it's uh, you know these these are like tries to to replicate what i'm seeing on the street and and understanding why uh, that are so appealing to me mm -hmm. so these ones uh this is called well monumento playground they actually i i named them both like two different names um so these are bricks or um stones that i found in construction sites here in Barcelona, where, you know, where all buildings has, has been destroyed or removed to, to build new constructions, you know, like this new kind of architecture that is being built here. And then, <clears throat> so there are certain areas here in Barcelona where it is happening a lot in, in a, any major city, you can see that Um, you know, it's part of the gentrification process and, and you know, all these situations that we are very aware of. Yeah. So um, this is kind of like paying a little tribute to, to small spaces like that and, you know, taking advantage of those um, empty spaces that are in transition, you know, that are not longer the building that it used to be there, but it's not the new building that is going to be soon. So those spaces in transition to me are filled with like super profound histories and, and, and um, you know, it's, it's spaces that are charged with, with all this energy of uh, transformation, um, especially from what they used to be before. So the, the little pieces of, of bricks that are left behind <clears throat> I try to collect them and, and some of them are, you know, like the, the one in the left here is, it's hard to see, but some of them you find them with, with um, actually little plants growing inside them, you know. So, so I create the, the steel structures, like little steel structures, almost like, you know, making a, a homage, a tribute to these little pieces that represent where it used to be there, you know, and, and And in a way of not even a monument, but like an anti-monument process of, um, you know, giving them the importance of not being important at all, you know? So when you have a monument of, you know, like Prosser or whatever, like these people, 
uh, you understand why they're there and you understand why they're a monument and you understand why they're supposed to be important. Uh, and then why they are like, they have these huge, you know, monuments raised in, in their names. So this is like making the same process, but like for something that is not longer important, um, but for something that at some point, I'm sure it was really important because this is probably a piece of somebody's house at some point, or it was a piece of, you know, like uh, somebody lived there, somebody, you know, build their houses there, build their families, build their dreams. And, and you know, and as part of the process of transformation, the city, um, they, they stopped being that. Uh, and they left it behind. So to me, it's kind of asking, my question, asking myself, like what happened with that? What happened with, with, with those families? What happened with those, you know, the people who used to live there, the people that, used to, I don't know, the kids that grew there and, and so on. Um, and it's not a melancholic idea. It's more like, you know, acknowledging that this is happening. And at least to me, uh, they carry some importance to it, you know? So it's creating these small monuments for at least a little, a little, for a little moment you know, for like a little piece of time and a little piece of history, uh, you can preserve it there. Uh, so so it's, it's sort of like that. Also, you know, so that's why I, I call them playground too, because, you know, it has that feeling of, of childish, um, you know, um, architectural put together things that are not important, but you can put it there and, and play around with it, you know? Yeah. But, uh, but, uh, but in a more tragic way, because something that, you know, it was supposed to, it was demolished to, to build something new. So why not take it and, and play around with it? Mm. And then this is our, these are other, um, you know, um, ideas. Here, here are two things that I found really interesting with this, these two pictures. The first one is like the, the, the construction, the, necessi the necessity of creating elements to support or hold or protect, or, you know, like the fence we saw before, or this one here in, in, the, in the right, um, which is like, you know, it's holding this uh, medieval wall that's surrounding a, uh, uh, a city. And then you have to create this huge structure to hold it together, you know, to keep yeah. it together. Uh, so it's, you know, it's so ironic and contradictory. And at the same time, like visually, to me, it's so appealing to have that idea of having to create that to support something that is supporting something that is, you know, keeping away. You know, and, and also how the history changes because, you know, initially those walls were, you know, created to protect the city and, and you know, against invasions and, and all this stuff. And now it's, a, it's, a, it's an icon of like tourism because, you know, these are kind of things that you go to a city to, to look at, yeah, you know. So we have to <clears throat> keep creating human like man, man made things to keep holding the things that we created before, you know, it's like uh, yeah. <laughs> trying to, to put things together to support the things that we've been creating that, you know, that if you think in the long run, like it doesn't make much sense. Um, and this is, well, this is just an, an image that I, I really like. And this is like a, a water drain Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, with with the time, just like little stones from the road, keep keep adding, keep just falling there, but just not so far that they go through, but not so big that I can go roll away. So just stay there, yeah. and create these images of, of. But again, it's just the, the elements talking together in in their natural mm -hmm. um, setting. And then finally. Well, I, that, that's why I use this image here because um, kind of like the same thing, you know, like the, the, the stones and the rocks being hauled uh, by the mad-made elements. 
and it's sort of like this this last project that I'm showing, which is called Manifiesto y Ruina, um, which is basically kind kind of like the same idea as the as the playground one. Um, you know, of, of uh, these are also bricks that uh, that uh, that I found in in construction sites, <clears throat> and then. Um, and then I recreate sort of like the architectural elements of where I found them. So the steel holders that you see there are, are replicating, replicating uh, some architectural elements that I saw on, on the construction sites where, where, I, where I found the, 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 you know, the bricks. Um, and then the element of the of the word here uh, is it's an element that I'm, I'm I'm really interested in, which is um, you know um, the idea of to me the use of the word in in the in the art practice is very political you know it's like art is politics in a way, and 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 to me the use of the word also has a very strong you know. Um, side of, of uh, like a um, pamphletarian element, you know, of, of, you know, making you, making the viewer have a strong idea about something, you know, but in these cases, um, like you're, you're not even able to read what, you know, each of the pieces are saying because the, the, the words are cut out because of the destruction of the, so it gives you the idea that you know it was a complete sentence it was a complete phrase at some point uh before they were destructed uh destroyed uh, so so kind of like thinking what could they possibly say you know and what they could possibly be referring to and again it's open it's somehow like open to to interpretation and Kind of like the same as as we spoke in the first project. This is, um, you know, depending who you are, you're gonna have an idea of what they say. You know, so it can be whatever, like it can be anything that you want. Uh, but I'm sure anyone who sees them and try to figure it out, what they what they're talking about, there has gotta be some, uh, you know, personal and political. Mm. charge attached to it maybe no? exactly yeah 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 like uh, you know it's something something that is more it's not not subtle if you mm -hmm. will you know mm -hmm. um so yeah that's that's kind of like the, the idea with with this project um and that's why i call it manifiesto which is you know like manifiesto as, as the idea of this text that you know, especially in the in the in the avant-garde, where manifest the manifestos were so important to define what you know what a work was, what art was. Um, so this is like the 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 ruins of those manifestos, you know, and somehow like what comes after the manifesto, what are the what are the what was left behind when the manifestos were destroyed. And what can we take from it? And what, what can we create from it after we move on? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, there's uh, an intention to look toward the future and somehow in your work. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Especially in this last one. Yeah, definitely. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay. So, um, yeah, so I think th those are the projects that I'm, you know, the, the, the last projects that I've been working on. Um, I found them really connected one to, you know, to each other mm -hmm. um, and they're been done in the last, in the past two years. So, you know, each one has a little element of, of the other, uh, you know, they're, they're really interconnected and, and yeah, that's, that's basically what I've been working on lately.